everybody, how's it going? It is Max with Buzz Talks here, and I am back with another Westworld Season 4, Episode 2, Reaction and Review, where I give my initial thoughts and feelings of the latest episode to drop. Now, all in all, I actually really liked the episode, even though it was slower and they were doing more foundation building for the upcoming episodes to come. And for me, I'm actually fine with them providing a slow build because it brings more questions, more mystery, and it offered a lot of interesting twists that will have people really theorizing and trying to predict what's going to happen. And for starters, a lot of really cool revelations I found in this episode was with Dolores' storyline, even though it was very short. Her storyline right now still parallels her in season one. She woke up and she started to dig for answers. She saw more symbolism of the tower that the homeless guy was talking about, and she heard of the tower already from the guy Peter Myers who was harassing her. And she basically went to go pay her respects as he made a big donation to some type of mental health center. And on her way, she realized that the story that she pitched for her company really resembles his own story. And Dolores' pitch essentially boiled down to Peter didn't feel like he fit in, and he felt different from everyone else around him. He started seeing things, believing in conspiracies, and it resulted in his wife leaving him. He lost his job, and then he blamed it on a girl that he became obsessed with. He continued to stalk her, and he contemplated killing her. And it got to a place where he couldn't handle it, so he killed himself. Now that's an interesting story, because it has a lot of parallels. The idea that he didn't fit in and felt different from everyone else is Dolores to a T, and that's what she dealt with when she was pursuing the maze. She was the only person who was on the path to consciousness. But this story also parallels a couple other characters. First is William. He believed that there was something greater to the park of Westworld. A lot of people went there for pleasures. The simple pleasures. To be able to kill and play. But William saw it as much deeper. That's why he pursued the maze in season one as strongly as he did. He belonged to another world, and his wife left him by killing herself. And then he stalked some girl, Dolores. He continued to go back in the park and see Dolores. Over time, he ended up causing her pain, because the more she suffered, the more real she became. And William probably killed Dolores many, many times over. So that's a story that perfectly aligns with William, and it could potentially align with Caleb. Caleb has a lot of similarities to William. Both of them are definitive outliers, and they're bored with the mundane of life. They feel like they belong elsewhere. They both have a wife and a daughter. So I could also totally see Caleb falling down this storyline, where he starts to believe in quote-unquote conspiracies. And starts feeling separated from everyone else. Because maybe he gets corrupted by the tower. And that's what I'll say is Caleb's story is just beginning. And we saw him enter a brand new park with Maeve. He was seduced exactly the same way William was in his entrance to Westworld. But he did not partake because he had a wife at home. But then the park completely changed William. And I think you could argue that the park could change Caleb. But after that, Dolores ends up making it to this facility, and she finds out that it's run down, it's old, and it's closed down. And this basically confirms that we're in a time loop here, because that was my theory I had last episode, where Maeve and Caleb are in the present, but Dolores is so far in the future. And when Bernard comes back from the Valley Beyond, he's not going to see Maeve and Caleb, he's going to see Dolores. But moving on to William and Charlotte, we start to see more of their motivations. The episode opens up with Clementine being killed by William, dressed as the man in black. It was a different scenery. I don't know why Clem was there. Last season we saw her, she was a blank slate, she was corrupted, and she was basically Dolores' minion. But here it seems like she has some loyalty to Maeve still. So William killed her there, but then we continuously see Clementine throughout the episode as William's secretary or assistant. We learn through Maeve and Caleb's storyline that William is essentially replacing people in power by hosts so he can maintain control. 
they have over 200 hosts that are now operating in the world. That includes the governor or the senator of California, and then we see him finally convert the vice president of the United States. So we're going to see throughout these episodes that they're going to get increasingly more powerful, and they're going to have all the people who run the world in their back pocket. We see them constantly running away as they're under investigation, and he's slowly taking them over one by one. William seems to have killed the vice president and replaced him with a host. However, the other Secret Service member is given the fly, and it flew under his eye. And it seems like the show is presenting us some weird way that they can manipulate humans with the use of this genetically modified fly. I don't know how they're going to explain this in terms of science. It seems to go against everything that they've established so far in the show. But we've seen it twice now, where the cartel member was mind-controlled by these flies, and so was the senator's wife, who essentially became psychotic. And these people who become psychotic, they essentially mimic the hosts exactly. In the earlier seasons of Westworld, when hosts were on the urge of discovering the maze and reliving their reveries, they would go insane. And that is what's happening with the humans. So I don't know how they're going to bridge that gap and explain how humans are prone to this like the hosts. We also learn in this storyline that William is still alive. He's on ice, stored away, and Charlotte is keeping him just so he can watch what happens. She's keeping him alive for sport. And Charlotte clearly has a vision. She's slowly taking over people who are in power. And she said in her own words, she believes humans are jackals. And it's not safe to bring her hosts into this world as long as humans seem to be in it. And she wants her kind to grow and blossom. So it seems like she has some weird mission to alter humanity but not completely exterminate them. We need to see that develop more. But the one thing I will say is William clearly, when he gets out of here, he's going to have a bone to pick with Charlotte. And that's why I think it's only natural that in this season or next season, we're going to see Dolores and William become allies again. Maybe Maeve will team up with William, give him the benefit of the doubt again, and maybe he will go through the door. But finally, on to Maeve and Caleb. These characters clearly have a deep history. We saw with some of the flashbacks, even though the timelines don't necessarily work out. The riots happened seven years ago, and yet Caleb has a daughter that's seven years old. But they've also gone on missions together that they talked about a little bit in this episode. But after they did some investigative work, they end up in this brand new park based on the 1920s. And clearly they're there for some reason, they want some type of answer. Obviously Charlotte's pulling the strings on this new park, and maybe Maeve and Caleb are trying to uncover some of the motivations. I wouldn't be surprised if Charlotte is pulling the strings and using Caleb almost as like a benchmark or example for humanity. I saw way too many similarities between Caleb and William in some of these scenes. You have the host trying to hit on him, but he has a wife at home so he turns him down. He doesn't partake in these enjoyments because of the person that he is. We see that Caleb's never been to the park. He could never afford it. And he's somebody, just like William, who feels like life is mundane and meaningless. And when he goes in the park, he's going to be able to do all those things and live out the life that he deems fit. But that is it with this episode, and that's all I have to say. Let me know what you think about this episode in the comments section down below. I'd love to hear your thoughts. But until next time, I'll see you guys later.